Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Angela aka Stitching Brit and this is floss tube number 43 I believe. So I haven't been here for five months. It has been five months since I last filmed a floss tube video. Lots has happened in that time and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait to the end of um, the video and do a big life update and let you know what's been going on. So if you want to hang around for that then please do but I know that you're probably here for the stitching so I'm just going to jump straight in. I have got so many projects to show you. I've got 16 projects to show you that I've worked on in those last five months. So yeah without further ado let's get started. First of all I'm going to show you some haul because Heaven and Earth have had uh, quite a few sales since May and some of them have been 50% sales so you know couldn't resist those. So I just want to show you some of the charts that I purchased. Um, the first one is Mini Deer Creek by Donna Gelsinger. I know lots of you are doing that one. So that's the first one. This next one is Mini Paris Morning by Uliana Babenko, I think that's how you say it. And these, um, I've got plans of when I'm going to start them. So I will let you know um, over the next few weeks when I'm going to be starting those. Uh, this one is Christmas Ornaments Snow Much In Love by Donna Gelsinger. I love Donna Gelsinger and Amy Stewart, but it's nice that I've picked some designs this time who from different designers. But again, we've got another Donna Gelsinger one, Ornament the Enchanted Christmas. That one. Now this one, I'm blaming Jemima, the uh, rocking, I think it's rocking stitcher. Um, she has started this and I just fell in love with it and I was like, I've got to have that chart. So I'm completely blaming her for this one. But this is Mini Love Letters Chocolate Shop by Amy Stewart. And the last one by Randall Spangler is Mini Vaccinated. Many of you guys will know I have got the virus detected one, which I'm working on. I just thought this was um, an accompanying piece, really. So that's that one. So let's get into my projects. The very first one that I worked on was, is my oldest whip. It's probably not something that I would stitch on now, but I want to get this finished. It's 25 years plus old at least. And this is around the year with poo. Um, all the months there, oh, a bit of glare. But that's, um, like I say, around the year with Pooh. I haven't done a great deal. I think I did May. Oh, no, sorry, not May, April. I think I worked on April. So this is it in its entirety. And then the bit I worked on is this one here. Let's see if I can fold that. And if I have any before pictures, I will obviously put those in for all of the projects that I have. So that was April. Um, yeah, it's looking good. But like I say, it's not something I'd probably choose to stitch on now, but I do want to get this one finished. So this is stitched on 18 count, two over one. I think it was the kit fabric and I'm using the kit floss as well. So then I worked on one of my newer starts for um, some of my Heaven and Earth designs, which was the Quick Stitch April Fairy by Hannah Lynn. Again, I know a lot of you guys have stitched on it or are stitching on it. Such a pretty piece. And I am stitching this on a rose coloured 20 count Ada. I'm stitching it two over one. All of my designs are full crosses. Um, two over one and this is where I'm up to just a quite a small start in the corner I did 995 stitches and I'm at 2.93 percent I think I the last time I worked on it I started doing quite a bit of the black and I don't know whether to do more of the black and then fill in the colors because 
yeah there's a lot a lot a lot of black <laughs> i forget how many stitches there are but there is a lot of black in this piece um but i just love the colors of this piece it's just yeah my kind of colors really throughout the whole design but that's that one and the next project is my biggest project and this is World Travel Bookshelf by Amy Stewart and I am just in this very top corner here and I've been stitching in it a little while um, but yes it is huge so now when I started this piece I started stitching diagonally then I went cross country and you can kind of see the cross country bits and then now I've converted it to the Royal Rose method. And there is um, a YouTube video on how to do the Royal Rose method, but you basically take two 10 by 10 blocks, you work down, if there's a color, that's two blocks below it, you park there. And if not, you end the thread to, that, to the side, basically. And I know a lot of people don't like park threads, but my goodness, I am in love with this method that I'm converting many of my projects it's a bit of a nightmare the first row is a bit of a nightmare because you've got to start all the colors and then you can park them below but once you do that it is just i love it i really love it this bit on the left though is going to be a little bit of a nightmare because obviously of all the cross country but i'm getting there and i just love with this method how you just see the picture come alive a little bit more i think anyway um but yeah like i say really really enjoying this and I am obviously stitching on the first shelf. This is the end up here, is the end of page two. So I don't know whether to go, well, I'm gonna go all the way down so that I've got, you know, page two done on the whole shelf. But then I'd love to ask your opinion, guys. Do I go across and finish this whole shelf? I mean, this isn't even the whole, length of it for the shelf it goes a bit more or do i drop down and do the first two pages on each shelf and then go back up to the top and do the next two pages and so on i think there's 10 pages across in total so that'd be like five moves if that makes sense so let me know what you guys think i should do whether i should carry on with that shelf or move down when I've done those two pages because I would love to know but this is my weekend project because I, I need to get more, more done um I have done how much have I done 1956 stitches actually I think I've done a bit more than that I've probably done nearly two over nearly 3,000 probably um because I actually worked on it this weekend I don't think I added that in um and I'm nearly at four percent on that one so this is stitched on 20 count two over one and like i say just loving the royal rose i'd love to know if also as well if you guys have converted any of your project to royal rose or if that's how you're stitching because um, i see so many people in the royal rose facebook group as well so again another place to go for like help and support with it really so last i've actually filmed this floss tube video this is the second time i'm filming it because the day that i filmed originally and i was going to post it was the day when sadly our queen died and it just didn't feel right posting um my floss tube video especially because i talked about this next piece um stitching it during her jubilee back in the summer so I just I just didn't want to put the video out and obviously lots has happened since and another month has gone by but this piece has slowly become one of my favourite pieces and it is Story Keep Life is an Open Book London by Amy Stewart. As you guys know I've done the Paris version and I'm also working on the New York version which you will see um, today as well and I started this again with diagonal stitching and um, I was a little bit poorly when the Queen passed away, so I was doing lots of stitching and because this piece, I don't know, because of everything, it's London and the crown and everything, I just really worked on this whilst I was resting up and watching 
all of the coverage on the telly. So, and I converted this to Royal Rose. Now, some people might freak out at the amount of part threads, but it's brilliant when it comes to Royal Rose. So this is where I'm up to. As I say, I will pop in any before pictures that I have. And these part threads make it a dream to stitch on because it goes by so quick. And this is really coming together now. And I think actually I'm gonna make it one of my focus pieces moving forward because of how quickly I find these two blocks stitching up now. I just feel with the park threads, it does make it easier. It, it looks a lot, I can I get that, it looks a lot. For someone who doesn't like park threads, we'll probably be freaked out by all of these park thread, threads, but to me, this is, I just absolutely love this. And I love how the how the picture's looking. I love that every stitch is, stitch is no gaps. And I'm just gonna keep going with this. So I have stitched uh, 4,230 stitches. I'm at 9.01% and it's stitched on 18 count, Aiden. Now the reason why I started this on 18 count, um, I love 20 count. The reason why I started this on 18 count is because I started the Paris one on, I, I, I stitched the Paris one on 18 count and I'm doing the New York one on 18 count and I want the three of them to be framed together and I thought it would look a bit odd if they were on different counts of fabric. So that's why that one's on 18 count. So then I stitched on my temperature typography and I am so behind. How I've got so behind on this piece, I really don't know, but I will catch up and I will finish this before the end of the year. This is Temperature Typography by Sarah, the Stitching Mummy. You can find her charts on her Etsy shop, Stitching Mummy. And this is what it will look like. And this is where mine is up to. I'm just nearly finishing May. So I have got, let me put that behind. I have got a long ways to go. And ironically I can't wait to get to the sort of June July August months because this summer was our hottest summer in the UK I think since temperatures have been recorded I think we hit 40 degrees here in the south and it was hot and the UK is just does not have the infrastructure for hot weather so we really struggled I couldn't even, I could barely do any stitching, let alone film a floss tube or anything else. It was just, for us, it was just too hot. So I know that I've reached the top temperature of the scale of the temperatures on this chart. So I cannot wait to see that being stitched. But yes, I've got plans in my diary of when I'm gonna catch up with this piece, but this is where I'm up to. And I, I do love seeing the different weathers um, throughout the year. So that was that one. Oh, this is stitched on a 20 count, sort of an ivory cream coloured Ada. I don't know if you can see it, that's a cream colour there. The next one I worked on, and I really love this piece. I really should bring this out more. It's Faces of Fairy 178. Now I call this my pink fairy by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. That's what it will look like. And again, stitched on 20 count. And this is where I'm up to. So as you can see, I was stitching in the diagonal and I'm converting this one to Royal Rose as well. It is a bit of a nightmare converting from diagonal to Royal Rose, but you get there, you, it gets there in the end. And yeah nothing more I can say about that I think I've said everything I need to say about Royal Rose I am obviously at the two ends so that's how wide it's going to be but yeah every time I pull this out I think oh I need to stitch on this more well I want to stitch on all of them more I wish I could get paid you know have a job where I could just stitch that'd be ideal wouldn't it so yeah what did I do on this one I stitched yeah 782 stitches I'm at 13.76% and I'm just gonna continue doing my Royal Rose method. So then I worked on another Amy Stewart piece called Story Keep 
beach bliss oh, i love it it just reminds me of holidays i haven't had a holiday in i don't know how long since before the pandemic um and it just reminds me of my lovely beach holidays that i love and this one is not stitched on gridded fabric now you might be surprised at what i'm going to say about this piece but let me just show it to you first if i can just bend that over there we go right so this is where I'm at. And again, I have reached across the whole of the width of the project. It is going to be a very, oh, a very long project. It maybe not is not so wide, but it is very, very long. Now, because it wasn't gridded, I just started using the typewriter method, which is you pick the first symbol on the left, and you stitch that two thread runs out and then you go back and pick the, pick the next symbol on the left until you get all the way along really um and you do that with each row and then i thought well let me try the real rows method so i try the real rows method and i can count i can count to 10 that's all you need to do when you do the real rows method really but i just didn't like it for this project i i don't know why i don't know if it's because it wasn't on gridded fabric or I just don't know why. So I had all these part threads and I just worked them in. I just thought, no, this isn't the project for real rows and that's okay. You can stitch whatever method you like on each project. It doesn't matter. The point is it's it's your stitching. It's your, it's how you want to do it really. Um, I just love the real rows methods for the pieces that I've chosen for it. But this one, no, it's not, didn't sit well with me doing the real rows method on this piece. So I'm gonna, I'm literally taking one 10 by 10 square, filling every symbol and working the, working the colors through. But yeah, I just love it. And I can't wait to get more to the beachy bit. So that's that one again, 20 count. And how much did I do? I did 1,225 stitches and I'm at 2.25%. My next one oh another piece i just love i just honestly i know i love all my pieces but yeah this one is mini princess of the sea by donna gal singer and i'm obviously doing the mini but i saw that there was a story keep version and i was really tempted to restart and do the story keep version and i thought no actually i quite like the background i know you can't always say that with every piece but i really do quite like this background so this one, um, for anybody that's been with me from the beginning will know, I started this piece on 25 count and I was doing two over one tenth stitch. And I got to about, I think it was about five, 6,000 stitches. And I looked at it and I thought, can I honestly carry on doing this tenth stitch until the end? Which this piece has got, I think, I don't know how many stitches, let's say 70,000. And I just looked at it and thought, no, I can't. And at that moment, I just packed it away, found some fabric and restarted it. Now, I'm not back to where I was. I think on my original piece, I'd got to the girl's, I'd worked down and I'd got to the girl's face. I have started this piece in the diagonal because that was where I was going. And now, again, converting this piece to the Royal Rose method. Again, just love doing it let me put that behind it because it's quite a light they're quite light colors just love stitching in that method and i just think it looks absolutely gorgeous the colors are brilliant the coverage is amazing and yeah i'm gonna keep going i don't think i'm quite i think i'm just halfway actually so i've got a bit more to go before i reach the end but yeah that's where i'm at so i stitched on this and I did 1,332 stitches. I'm at 4.36% now. And like I say, it's on 20 count, Ada. So the next one is a little bit different. This is Christmas Memory Jars by Susan Bates. Now this was a sale that was started by Cross Stitch Bunny here on Floss Tube. And yeah, you've guessed it, I'm behind. <laughs> But I am working on this just to catch up because I want to I wanna finish the sale with everybody. I think we should be on coming up to jar seven. I don't think we've quite started that one yet. So yeah, on jar six actually, on jar six at the moment. 
um, but I am working on this about half an hour every day just so I can catch up. I think what got me behind was I didn't have all my flosses. So I ordered them and then when they came in, I'd kind of lost momentum with how I was going to do it. And yeah, so I'm doing it half an hour each day and I this is where I'm up to. I have done, oh, let me put that behind. I have done two and a half but I haven't quite finished the back stitching on them. You can see the back stitching that I've started on this one. I just need to finish the back stitching on this one. I'll finish that one, do the back stitching. But what I'm doing is I'm just getting all as much stitching done as I can, and then I can go back and do the back stitching because the back stitching really doesn't take much time at all. So I'm hopefully gonna finish this one today, and then I can get started on the next one. I haven't quite worked out which direction I'm gonna go. I'm going to go above or below or how I'm going to do it yet but I will work on that one and yes that's my Christmas jars I've, I'm if I can get this one finished today I'm only, I'm only halfway behind um but I think I can catch up quite quick because these are actually really quite small and really quite quick to stitch up so that was that one and that is stitched again on 20 count I think it's like a white yeah whitish Ada and the next one is another one by Donna Gelsinger and this is You Make My Heart Melt and I am stitching this with Ashley the Stitching Penguin and I looked at this and I loved the design but I didn't love all the background and I had never ever cropped a piece on Pattern Keeper um, so I'm still not entirely sure I've done it right, but I'm going with it because I think I might have done it right. But anyway, but yeah, that's the piece. So this is what my piece will look like and how I've cropped it. I think that's how it will look like. I hope that's how it will look like anyway. So that's what mine will look like. And this is stitched on a cream coloured Ada, not gridded. And I'm just kind of going wherever the flow takes me. So this is where it's at. Actually, let me fold that back. There we go. This is where we're at. And I think just below here, I've got a little bit more pink and then I start the penguins. And I wanted to see how far down the penguins were. So, but I just love the colors in this. And it's, you can see the kind of heart forming there. There is still a bit of background, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna um, keep plodding on with this one. I may do a length of the black for the penguin so I know where the penguin is. And then I will just work my way down, work across and work down um, until I get to the penguins. But yeah, really love this one. Again, the colors are just awesome, pinks, purples. Yeah, really lovely. So this one, uh, I kind of just got a bit carried away with it. Um, and then I ran out of the pink and I couldn't stitch anymore. So I had to change projects because I really wanted to get a lot of the pink done. And this one, I stitched 1,855 stitches and I'm at three, I think I'm at 3.14%. And I say I think because obviously where I've cropped it, the percentage has, I've got rid of a lot of percentage, but I think I'm about 3.14% on that one. So the next one was a Christmas piece, again, by Donna Gelsinger. This is Minnie checking it twice. How awesome does that look? And this is, where am I actually now? I didn't get a lot of stitching done on this one, but I have lots of time planned for it coming up to Christmas. So this one, I think I was stitching Christmas in July. Um, yep, yeah, and that's, yeah, you can see that, just looking really good, the colours are awesome, this area here is so confetti heavy, it's like one ninja stitch and then you change colours, but yeah, just amazing, really colourful, really bright and very Christmassy. So yeah, did like I said, I didn't get too much done on it. I did 287 stitches, 
which I'm now at 10.89%. And again, this is stitched on a 20 count fabric. But this, I don't know if you can see in the camera, I might be able to. This is like a pearlized fabric. I won't be stitching another project on it. I will finish this one, but I will not stitch another project on it. It's not that easy to see um, the holes in these kind of pearlized fabrics. And it's a shame because I've got loads of this fabric for another project. But I can't see me using it for that. So I need to find something else to do with that fabric. But that's okay. I'm sure I will find something. So we're getting to the end of the projects. <laughs> the next one is um, a Quick Stitch Spirit of Winter Robin by Zero Machete. And this one, again, I've kind of done a bit of everything with this one. So this one, as you can see, stitching it on the diagonal and I kind of stopped there. Then I did a bit of cross country and then I'm converting this to a royal rose. And I wasn't sure how one of the ornament circular pieces would work with the royal rose, as in where do you end your threads when you get to the end of the line and anyway, things like that. But I'm working it out and I just thought, I would give it a go on this one and again because this is one of the first pieces i tried to convert to real rows now i've got more use to real rows it will be much easier and i can just carry on really but yeah you can see a little bit of where i was doing the cross country these are just some part threads here that need to come out but yeah not part threads threads i've ended i should say but i'm just loving how it's looking already these designs really do come to life, don't they? I just stitch them. So, yeah, that's my winter robin. Um, what did I do? Yeah, 710 stitches and I'm at 16.23%. And like most of my projects, again, another one on 20 count. So I've mentioned this piece earlier. This is um, Story Keep, Life is an Open Book, New York. And again, stitched on 18 count to match the other two. Now this one, I just, I haven't been able to kind of get my groove with this one. I'm not really quite sure why, but again, I will show you where I'm up to. I haven't really done that much. Um, starting in diagonal, and then I went cross country, and now I'm going to Royal Rose, but I'm just converting it to Royal Rose. And because I want to make London a bit of a, fo the London piece a bit of a focal piece, this will become a focal piece after London's done. I am going to work on it as much as I can each month, but like I say, it will become a focus piece once the London one is done. And yeah, I mean, it does look good what I've got, but I just, I don't know if it's because of the confetti in it or, or what, but I just haven't, I don't feel like I found my groove with it, but Hopefully when I get into the Royal Rose method, that will help me get into the groove because you can see just how many color changes there are. And I think that's just in one, yeah, that's just in one 10 by 10 block. So anyway, what did I do? I did da -da -da, not much, 152 stitches and I'm at 7.96%. So we'll see how much I can get done when I, get these royal rows in. Now this next piece is a little bit, um, uh, well I had it in time out, it's a bit of my nemesis to be honest. Not because I don't like the piece at all, but this is my mini virus detected by Randall Spangler. This is the accompanying piece to the vaccinated, the new vaccinated chart that I have bought. And this piece really is my nemesis because um, for anybody that saw my video a few months ago, I told you that I was working on a project, this project, and my pattern keeper just died on me. Well, not my pattern keeper. Yeah, my pattern keeper. You know, it was a pattern keeper. It wasn't a tablet. It was my pattern keeper. And the whole chart for this project went blank, like completely blank. No symbols at all in the and I did everything. I tried to reinstall every, you name it, I tried it. And as a result, I've had to try and input all of these stitches into Pattern Keeper. 
which is easier said than done. I thought, oh yeah, it won't take me, won't, won't, might take a little while, but it won't be too much of a job. Uh uh, because of the way I've stitched it, it's not uh, been easy at all. And it's actually put me off stitching it for ages, but I just thought, no, enough is enough. This was my second Heaven and Earth design that I started. I really should be further along with this one. So again, I'm gonna make this a focal piece on Mondays. Every Monday, this is gonna be my piece, but this is where I'm up to. And what I decided to work on was an area. I think I worked on this red bit here, the computer bit. Um, I wanted to work on an area that I knew was completely free from be needing to be inputted from Pattern Keeper. This first page, because when I first started, I was stitching it in pages, and if I'd have kept with that, it would have been easier to put in Pattern Keeper. So this first page, easy to put into Pattern Keeper, but the rest of it, not so much. So what I'm doing is I'm not, I really do like to record how many stitches I've done each time, but I'm just not doing that. As I come across a section and I feel like, I, and I've stitched it, I will just, Put the stitches in pattern keeper um but yeah so i just decided that i was going to do the computer bit and i think i will come up here and try and get as much this of this side done and then i'll come back to this side because otherwise like i said it was just putting me off and if i can see loads of progress then that will spare me on as well so that's where this one at. and it's so pretty um i don't want to not finish it I mean, I even contemplated, this is how bad it got, I even contemplated starting it again. Um, but I think I'd already done like 24% or something. And I thought, no, that's really silly. I just need to sort this out. So anyway, this is stitched on 20 count. This was my first piece that I started actually on 20 count. And that's this is what made me fall in love with 20 count. So this next piece, Mini Mountain Cabin by Dominic Davison is I was so pleased when I was stitching on this piece because I got from one end to the other end. And I just love that when you get to the end, when you get to one side, the other side of the project, that's always the goal for me to get to the other side. And this one is, let me open it right up. There's no real method to this, to the way this one's being stitched, um, but it just looks awesome, doesn't it? Just those colours, just, yeah, really lovely. Now this colour here, I believe is 995, and I think I've completed the 995. The pink that's sort of dotted around, because I did start this, when I started it, I was gonna do extreme cross country and do colour by colour. So the first pink that I started, this pink, hold on, let me see if I can get it, this. This pink here, that's all finished. So I've actually finished two colours in this project now. So I'm just gonna go along, and you can see there's lots of gaps in the in the top. Just gonna go along and just fill in all the gaps and work down. There's a lot of sky and there's a lot of like bulk colours, which is really good. So you get quite a bit done that way. So I'm just gonna do that. And at some point I wanna finish this tree Again, very confetti heavy and just work down. And yeah, just keep working down really. But I love the fact that I've gone all the way across now. So this is stitched on 18 count. And the reason why <laughs> this is stitched on 18 count is because I was too impatient to wait for 20 count to arrive. I had 18 count in my stash and I just wanted to start it that day. There was no stopping me from starting it. So the only thing I had was 18 count. And that's why it's on 18 count. But I managed uh, 1,020 stitches and I'm at 9.82%. So my last project, which is another stitch along, I think this was Emma X stitching or cross X, yeah, X stitching. She started this one and it is Mini Sunflower Cottage by Donna Gelsinger. Can you tell I've got a lot of projects by Donna Gelsinger? And this one, oh my goodness, the colours. You have to like blue though, because there's an awful lot of blue. 
this one is such a easy stitch now i had i was working on this last night i'm almost at the end i think i've just got um what have i got at the end i've just i think i've just got this sort of blacky bit at the end and then a bit more blue and then that's me at the end but i was working on the heart yesterday that's where i'm up to and this is stitched on 20 count white ada now the reason why i said earlier about the uh checking it twice the pearlized fabric same fabric but this is so much easier to stitch on than the pearlized and i just wished i'd i'd started the checking it twice one on white like this or even my my pre-gridded one um but yeah really love this fabric it's just yeah really nice i get it from a place on ebay i will link them below in the description box um but they are really really good they ship out really really fast and yeah fabric is just amazing so this is like i say stitch on 20 count and i did 364 stitches yesterday i'm going to be stitching on this again today and i'm 9.49 and the reason why I want to stitch on it is because I want to get it over that 10%. I always like these little milestones when it comes um, to my projects. So that is the end of all of the projects I worked on since I last saw you. If you are just here for stitching and you're not worried about hearing about the life update, that's absolutely fine. Thank you so much for bearing with me with all those projects and I look forward to seeing you again soon. But if you are here for my life update, then stick around so what has happened since may since i last saw you um again many of you will know if you've been with me from the beginning that when the pandemic hit i was immediately told to shield by my doctors because i have an underlying health condition and they felt that if i were to get covid i would have been very 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 poorly so I shielded for a long time until I'd had my second jab, I believe. And would you believe this year I got COVID? And I, it did worry me, I won't lie. Even though I've had three jabs, it did worry me. I was quite poorly and it took me a few weeks to recover. And to the point, so poorly that there were days I just couldn't stitch. I couldn't even, I couldn't even sit up, let alone lift my head up or anything. So yeah, quite poorly with COVID. And then I got better from that. Then after that, we had the summer heat. And again, I do not cope well in the heat. I'm all right if I'm on holiday and I can jump in a pool or go to the beach, but I do not cope well in the heat. And as I mentioned earlier, we do not have the infrastructure here in the UK to cope with that heat. And during that heat wave, my mother-in-law got COVID and um, she was very, very sick. She ended up in hospital and we were very, very, very concerned um, at which way it would go for her. Um, thankfully, she's okay now. She does have long COVID. But she's okay she she can manage and she gets about not as well as obviously what she did before but she's okay which is the main thing and then i so now we're into end of august beginning of september and i found out that i was pregnant and we were so excited um i do have to have fertility treatment this isn't obviously the place to talk about that but yeah i do have to have fertility treatment um but yeah i um was pregnant and sadly a few weeks ago i miscarried and uh, yeah devastated and however else you could possibly imagine feeling when you have a miscarriage. I am very lucky that my boyfriend and I were so supportive of each other with this. And we've got such supportive friends and family that these these people just helped us through it really. Now, I my miscarriage was actually very traumatic and I ended up in hospital for a few days and prior to that i was just told to be careful because obviously i do have an underlying health condition 
So I did, I did have to be careful during pregnancy, hence why I was stitching a lot during the coverage that I was watching when the Queen passed away. I was just trying to get lots of rest. And when I had my miscarriage, I realised that not many people talk about it. And I realised that more women go through this than I possibly imagined. The doctor told me that one in four pregnancies end in miscarriage. And that really, really shocked me because that's a lot of people going through that. So again, this isn't the channel to talk about this in more detail, but I'm okay and I'm getting through this. And I just want to say if anybody out there is struggling, then please reach out because talking about it, I think really helps. And I don't think we do that enough. So yeah, anyway, moving on to happier things. Um, that's basically what's been happening since May. It doesn't feel like it's been five months. It feels like it's only been a couple of months really, but like I say, a lot has gone on and I'm back stitching. I will be back posting regular floss tube updates. Um, I have missed filming. Um, I love, you know, I love my stitching, but I've missed sharing that with you. So I will be back posting more regular updates, probably in a couple of weeks time, if not sooner. So with all that said, I hope you guys have been safe and well, and I hope you are having a great stitchy time. And until next time, guys, bye for now.